Now let's try another problem that's dealing with this chemical process of making chalk, okay? So of course again we start with our balanced chemical reaction right there. And this is just describing what happened there. So for this question, to make 17.0 moles of chalk, okay? From the chemical reaction above, which is that one right there, how many grams of sodium carbonate will be needed if it's treated with excess solution of calcium chloride? So again, the same problem, but now I am not focused on calcium chloride because it's not given to us in terms of calcium chloride anymore, but it's given to us in terms of sodium carbonate. So that is, so if we look at this problem, notice how our given is in terms of moles of chalk. So that's our given, okay? So we are given 17.17 17 grams of, so we are given 17.0 moles of calcium carbonate. CaCO3 and then we are looking for how many grams of sodium carbonate are needed okay which in this case that is our question mark which we are looking for question mark of grams of Na2CO3 and how would this change our problem now, of course we can ignore the fact that it's being treated with excess amounts of calcium chloride because the excess does not determine how much product we make. But the same concepts still apply, always starting from your given, which in this case is no longer grams anymore, but it is what? It is mole. So we are starting from the chemical A, which is no longer calcium chloride, now is being changed to calcium carbonate, which is our product, isn't it? This is our product right there. In the last problem, we have that as our given. Now this is our given. So we know how much we want to make. The question is how much reactant do we need to have? So that's the beauty behind this. So this is our starting point. Moles of A. Okay. That's our given. And what are we looking for? How much we need to have in terms of sodium carbonate, which is a completely different chemical. We call it a chemical B then, of course. And what unit is it in? It's in grams. So we go across and we go to this is right here. This is where we are going to end. Look at that box right there. So to start from here to there, we need to go that way. There's no step that going that way. So we had to go across like this. This is our first conversion factor. And then from there, we have to go up. And that is our second conversion factor. See how that worked? And the concept is the same thing. What are we looking for? We are looking for grams of Na2CO3. And what do we have at the beginning? We have that we want to make 17.0 moles of calcium carbonate. And to do that, we go across and go up. We multiply by our first conversion factor, which is the number of moles A equal to the number of mole B. And we know exactly what A is in this case. It is calcium carbonate, CaCO3. And what is B? B is what we're looking for, which is Na2CO3. And where do we get this number from? Of course, when we deal with chemical reactions, it's coming from the coefficient, okay? Coefficient in this case, there's nothing there, so we assume it's gonna be one. So what's the coefficient for calcium carbonate? That is in this case is, oh, it's one again. Well, it doesn't change. And sodium carbonate is also one as well. So that's how we get the number of coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. Now we are done with that conversion factor. Let's move on to the next one, which is going up, right? So we have one mole of, look at now is B. What is B is no longer calcium carbonate, but now it's sodium carbonate. So NaCO3 equal to the number of grams and we call this molar mass. Do we have the molar mass for sodium carbonate? Of course it's right here. 106 grams of Na. 106 grams of NaCO3. There you go. Are we done? Yes, because we have multiplied our last conversion factor until we get to the very end. Now we just have to rewrite this as a fraction. So of course we have 17.0 mole of CaCO3 times this conversion factor right here, right? Which 
will have two parts. One will be on the bottom, the other part will be on top. Since this is moles of CaCO3 that we need to cancel out, this part will be on the bottom, one mole of CaCO3, and the top part will be the leftover, which is one mole of Na2CO3. Then we are done with that conversion factor. Notice how moles of calcium carbonate cancel out. Time our next conversion factor, which is this one. Now we have moles of NaCO3, so look at this part. Of course, the moles are going to be on the bottom. And the top part will be 106 grams of NaCO3. Or 2, there's a 2 there, my bad. Na2CO3. And look what happens to moles of Na2CO3. It cancel out, isn't that right? And given us the grams of Na. 2CO3, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's plug this into our calculator. Multiply everything on top, divide everything on the bottom. If that's the case, we have 17.0 time on top, time 1 we ignore, so time 0 0.06 divide everything on the bottom, which is just all 1. So we can just ignore that part. Give us 1802.00 grams of Na2CO3. So to mix 17 moles of chalk or calcium carbonate, we need to have that many grams of sodium carbonate that will react with calcium chloride to make that 17 point mole grams of chalk. And that's the concept behind, okay? So to make that much moles of chalk, 17.0, we need at least 18.02 grams of sodium carbonate that will react with an excess amount of calcium chloride. Now let's try another problem. To make 17.0 grams of chalk, we're no longer we're looking for moles, so right? In the previous problem, we're looking for mole. Now we're looking for grams of chalk. From the chemical reaction above, which is that one right there, how many grams of calcium chloride? So I'm not looking for grams of sodium carbonate, which is Na2CO3, but now we're looking for that right there. What we needed, it was treated with excess amount of sodium carbonate. So I twist the problem a little bit. Of course, we can ignore the term excess amount of that. Okay. But look at our given. It's not in terms of mole anymore. But now our given is what? It is 17.0 grams of chalk, which is CaCO3. Okay. But we are not starting or we're not asking for how much of sodium carbonate. But we're looking for grams of calcium chloride so this is our given which is question mark grams of CaCl2 problem so how would that change our problem of course your given has changed but your known is still the same unit right so again in this case we always starting from our given which is grams of A this is our starting chemical A is always our starting chemical Okay, from a given. And B is always the chemical of the unknown if the chemical are different. So the chemical is exactly, so if you look at the two chemicals here, they are completely different. So A, grams of A, we always start inside A, so that's where we start, okay? And where do we end? Of course we end in grams of B, which is on that side. So this is where we end. So now we're going back to down, go across, and go up. Right? So this is the first conversion factor we had to multiply by. This is our second and lastly our third. There is no one quick step like that. Okay, so keep that in mind. Follow the flow chart. So let's do this problem together. We are looking for question mark grams of calcium chloride. Basically, how much do we need of calcium chloride to make that much grams of chalk? So we are given 17.0 grams of CaCO3 time based on the flow chart. This is a first conversion factor. So we have one moles of A, and we know what A is going to be CaCO3 equal to number of gram, which we know the molar mass 100 grams of CaCO3 time. Okay, time our next conversion factor, which is that one. Number of moles A, which we know A is CaCO3, and equal to number of mole B, we know what B is CaCO2. Okay, 
So what is that number right there? That number is the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation. So in this case, for CaCO3, that's just 1. And for Ca2C, and for calcium chloride, it's just also 1. So it's by coincidence, they're both 1 in this case. And then we are done with that conversion factor. Let's move on to the next conversion factor. We have 1 moles of B no longer is willing with A. So we have now, we have 1 moles of B is no longer A anymore, right? So B is our calcium chloride equal to the number of grams of B, which is, we know, 111 grams of CaCO2. And we are done because this is our last conversion factor. All we have to do is rewrite this as a fraction. So we have 17.0 grams of CaCO3, right? Time of first conversion factors right here. What's going to be on the bottom of this conversion factor? Of course, this is grams, so the gram part is going to be on the bottom. 100 grams of CaCO3. And the top part will be the leftover, which is one mole of CaCO3. Notice how the gram cancel out. Then we move on to the next conversion factor. This is our second conversion factor. Notice how now we have moles of CO3 that we need to cancel out. So of course, one mole of CaCO3 will be on the bottom. And the top part will be, oh, I forgot to add in the mole part, my bad. Because it's number of moles A equal to number of moles B. So of course, this will be one mole of CaCl2. And the one is coming from the balanced chemical equation right there, right? The coefficient. So the moles of CaCO3 cancel out time. Now we multiply to the next conversion factor. Notice how we have moles of CaCO2. So of course, the mole part will be on the bottom, one mole of CaCO2 to cancel that out, okay? And the leftover, which is the top, CaCl2. And that is the grams of calcium chloride that we are looking for. Now let's multiply this. Everything on top divide everything on the bottom. So we can say that 17.0 times 111 grams of CaCO2 divide everything on the bottom, which is 100 because the rest is just 1. And we plug this into our calculator. Multiply everything on top, divide everything on the bottom, giving us 18.87 grams of calcium chloride. So this is how much of calcium chloride that you need to use to react with sodium carbonate just to make 17.0 grams of chalk. So that's the beauty concept behind it. Now let's go back to check the thing. If you notice right here, right, if you notice very carefully, notice how the solid is forming on the filtration paper. So that is the chalk that we make. So that's the solid right there. Okay, see that? Okay, because I haven't treated it all yet. But look at the water down at the bottom. See how clear it is. It's a lot clearer. That's because now that's just water and salt. Because salt is very tiny ions, okay? Because salt is extremely tiny, so it will go through the filtration paper. And that's what you see right there. So I'm going to filter some more. And if you look at this beaker right there, you see how it's on the bottom, it's all solid right there on the bottom. And that's a chalk precipitate that got stuck to the bottom of the beaker. And look how thick and milky this is, or cloudy it is, because now it's super concentrated with the leftover of salt that's forming. And that's the beauty of chemical reaction. We can make specific chemical of our choice if we know exactly what chemical reaction it is and what raw material that we need to react with to make that specific product.